God has been calling God's people to prepare the way of the Lord. Usually when I read today's gospel or hear Isaiah's ancient cry, I think of our responsibility as Christians to work for a more just world. A world in which all of God's people are cared for. Creating a just world is one of the central promises and commands of the Bible. God calls us to care, create a world where everyone has their needs met. Jesus had compassion for all God's people. And Jesus reminds us that we will be judged by our compassion for those who are lost, hungry, tired, injured, weak, thirsty, marginalized, and poor. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, you heard that gospel on Christ the King Sunday, where Jesus warns us that those who don't care for the least among us will face eternal <clears throat> We have a responsibility as Christians to work for social justice, not just for ourselves, but for all God's people. While it's certainly true that working for social justice for all God's people is an important way we prepare for the way of the Lord, there's an even more important way we need to prepare for the Lord. A preparation we need to make if our work for social justice is going to be effective and long lasting. The most important way we can prepare the way of the Lord is to prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming to us. I'll say it again. The most important way we can prepare the way of the Lord is to prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming to us. Jesus reminds us that what comes out of our mouths proceeds from our hearts. And this is what the Bible says. Out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, what comes out of our hearts. If we are faithful to God's ancient call to prepare the way of the Lord in our lives and in our world, we must first prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming to us. It's from our hearts that evil and good intentions come. If you pay close attention to our worship service, you'll hear the need to prepare our hearts expressed a number of times. It's throughout scripture, throughout our worship, throughout our day. At the beginning of our worship, we pray, as we light these candles, transform our hearts to live in justice, and harmony with each other. We live in a world that's anything at this point but just and harmonious. We realize our hearts need to be changed if we are to live in justice and harmony with each other. The major problem in our nation is not with policy, but the condition of our hearts as Americans. Our nation will only be blessed with justice and harmony if our hearts are changed and we treat each other with compassion, both our friends and our enemies. Compassion for everyone. Today's psalm, Psalm 85, reminds us that if we want true peace in our hearts, relationships, and nation, we must turn our hearts to God. Listen to the psalms. You speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to God. The only way to true peace is found in turning our hearts to God in order that we might have the heart of Christ for all God's people. We will be listening to We Are Called every Sunday during Advent and probably on Christmas Eve. We Are Called is a beautiful reminder that we as God's people are called to open our hearts. Isn't that a beautiful image in that song? We're called to open our hearts to others and treat them the way the Lord treats us, with compassion, understanding, and mercy.
deny it knowing him. Imagine the pain Jesus must have experienced because he opened his heart to others. It's sad that our hearts break so easily, but there's no other way to build relationships that are life-giving without opening our hearts to each other. And when our hearts are broken and wounded, to open them again, that is the way of Jesus, to continue to return to each other, to forgive each other, and invite each other back into the life. Heart to glad sound reminds us that Jesus comes the broken heart to bind, the broken heart to heal. Jesus knows how broken our hearts can be and comes to heal our broken hearts with his compassion, understanding, and mercy. Jesus heals our broken heart and sends us out to heal the broken heart of others. Heart to glad sound and on Jordan's bank, the Baptist remind us that Jesus wants to live in our heart so that we might experience his compassion, his understanding, and his mercy, and then share those blessings with others. Jesus continues to open his sacred heart to us and calls us to do the same for each other. Opening our hearts to each other is the only way to life-giving relationships that will sustain us through all our trials and troubles and bless us with that true peace God desires for us. John the Baptist calls us to prepare the way of the Lord, to make straight and level the paths that lead to God's kingdom. If we're serious about listening to John the Baptist, Isaiah, Jesus, and God, and what they're calling us to do, the most important thing we can do is to prepare our hearts, to free ourselves from all our evil intentions, our desire to hurt others, our unfaithfulness to God and those we love, our self-gratification at the expense of others, our greed, lies, slander, and all the other evil that comes from our hearts, so that our hearts might be filled with compassion, understanding, and mercy for ourselves and for all others. That is what we have been created and called to be and to do. That is the way of Jesus. How is your heart? Is it filled with compassion, understanding, and mercy for everyone in your life? Everyone in your life, especially those who don't like or consider your enemies. Does your heart move you to give thanks for all God's blessing and seek God's will? Does your heart move you to reach out to others, especially those who have wounded and broken hearts, to offer the same compassion, understanding, and mercy that Jesus offers you. The prayer we will use following communion reminds us of God's call to open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you catch that? Jesus calls us to open our hearts to the world's needs for his sake. I pray that you might take time to look into your heart and be honest about what's there. In Psalm 51, King David cried out to God, which is one of our Christian traditional offertory, created me a clean heart of God. He looked into his heart and he saw the ugliness and evil that dwelt within his heart. I pray you might be aware of our Lord's presence with you and his compassion, understanding, and mercy for you, regardless of how dark or wounded or broken your hearts are. And I pray you might open your hearts to all God's people, including the people to whom you have closed them, even if it means risking being wounded and hurt again, in order that you might be faithful in preparing the way of the Lord 
by getting reconciliation, peace, and hope a chance. The Lord is depending on you, along with all the rest of us. I'm going to close with the first line of the prayer today we prayed just a few minutes ago. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. May you be faithful in preparing the way of the Lord by opening your heart to others. The Lord is depending on you to do so, along with the rest of us. Amen. Amen.